What is the essence of Kirby? The series has gone through dozens of iterations over the last 30 years. From 2D platformers in the Game Boy to the boundless potential of mouthful mode in the most recent Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Everyone's favorite pink puff has done it all. Nintendo planner Yuri Hattori, who worked on Kirby's Return to Dream Land, thinks the phrase, anything is possible, sums up Kirby. And I'm inclined to agree. Kirby games can be approached by almost anyone, and the player is practically guaranteed to have a great time. But anything is possible can also have a dark undertone. Kirby as a series is generally known for its happy, chill vibes. But when it comes to Kirby's Return to Dream Land Deluxe Edition, completionists are soon confronted with a bit of a nightmare. Hey everyone, I'm Gerard the Completionist, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Sometimes, when I'm deciding what games I'm going to complete for the show, I try to give myself a break. My friends, I thought that completing a game like Kirby's Return to Dreamland would be a stress-free time, because this is a re-release of an older game. And you know what? I was wrong. I give Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe Edition my completionist rating of Finish It, and with good reason. I was excited when Nintendo announced this remake, as I never touched the Wii original, so I went into this willfully blind. But the requirements for completing Return to Dreamland pushed me way further than any Kirby game I've played to date. It's a delightful time overall, but I'll be honest, um, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted after completing this game, and I'm not sure if the effort is gonna be worth it for everyone at home. So with that said, let's get into it. But real quick, if you want some more completionist goodness, we just posted our Metroid Fusion episode on our Patreon. So you can watch it early right now for just five bucks. With that said, let's begin. Yes! All glory goes to the winner. Dreamland, a whimsical world full of delicious snacks and adorable creatures. Or adorable snacks and delicious creatures. Who can say? Even when things feel dire in Dreamland, they never all ever feel that bad. The worst thing that happens is that King Dedede tries to box you, or maybe a tree drops an apple on your head. But the reason we keep returning to Dreamland isn't only because it's where Kirby and all of his pals live. Dreamland is a state of mind. Even if you never played the original version on the Nintendo Wii, Return to Dreamland Deluxe feels familiar, and that's part of the draw. If you've played a 2D Kirby game in the last three decades at all, you might think you know exactly what you're in for here. Return to Dreamland Deluxe plays all of the hits. Kirby, our little pink puff ball of power, runs through stages from beginning to end. He inhales enemies, spits them out, occasionally steals their powers. Stages are a little bit platformy, a little bit puzzly, the secrets defined and just the lightest bit of tension applied from combat. The premise is extremely basic. Kirby and pals are running around Dreamland, eating cake and, in Meta Knight's case, reading books, when they notice an interdimensional spaceship crashing through a portal. Kirby, Bandana Waddle Dee, King DDD, and Meta Knight investigate the crash and find a little guy named Magalore. Kirby assesses the situation and agrees to help Magalore repair his ship by trekking across Dreamland to find all of the parts of the ship, the Lore Star Cutter. For Kirby, this is about as low stakes as things get. But rest assured, by the end of this game, Kirby will be battling for the fate of the universe. I feel like that's what happens in all Kirby games to a degree, but that's kind of the normal, right? Kirby games tend to be easy to understand. The mainline games are simple 2D platformers, but Kirby has also become one of Nintendo's most experimental mainline franchises. And Kirby has done it all at this point, from fighting games to racing games to weird food-based battle royale games. But Return to Dreamland is significant for a few reasons. Obviously, I am completing the remake today, but the original Wii version was a big deal because it was the first traditional Kirby game on a home console since Kirby 64. 
That's practically an 11 year gap. Developer HAL Laboratory scrapped several in development Kirby games before Return to Dreamland finally came to be. In one of his famous Awata Asks interviews, the legendary Satoru Awata chats with the game's director, Shinya Kumazaki. Kumazaki noted that in that 11 year gap, three Kirby games have been planned and partially completed. The team for this Wii game had to figure out what they could still use and what they would have to build from scratch. The final product was viewed as a perfect nostalgic Kirby title that still had some tricks up its sleeves with a focus on multiplayer. So multiplayer in a Kirby title is not unusual, but in Return to Dreamland Deluxe, it is front and center. Every cutscene features Kirby and three of his pals, as if the game is urging players to gather up some friends to dive in. Taking a leaf from new Super Mario Bros. Wii, Return to Dreamland lets four players run around and cause mayhem together. Kirby can even hail other players and shoot them at enemies or over a cliff. And for the first time in Kirby's history up to that point, Return to Dreamland lets the other drop-in players control another Kirby as well if they want. Yes, you can pick DDD or Meta Knight, but who doesn't want to be Kirby as well? There's a challenge to make a game that feels satisfying in multiplayer and for solo completionists, but HAL Laboratory, as always, does an admirable job. Multiplayer is crazy and chaotic, but still very, very fun. Four-player co-op games are still pretty tough to find, so it's great that Nintendo has reached into their back bench and brought another one to the Switch. Return to Dreamland Deluxe is a vastly expanded product compared to the original. I was surprised at how dense the completion process for this game is. There's the mainline story mode featuring seven worlds with several stages in each. Each level is capped off with a boss fight and there are collectibles called energy spheres to be found in nearly every stage as well. Finding these energy spheres unlocks nine challenge stages in Magalore's ship, each based around a unique copy ability as well as other mini game modes and copy rooms. But the main story mode is only the beginning. There is a ton of additional content added to this version of the game, notably a little place called Mary Magaland. You can visit Magaland anytime you want after it's unlocked by clearing a couple stages in Cookie Country. Now, I thought that Mary Magaland was just a sub-game repository where you can relax with some multiplayer minigames, but boy was I ever wrong. Turns out there is a ton of stuff to do in Magoland beyond playing sub-games with your friends. There are over 100 in-game mission achievements to complete, statues to unlock, and cosmetic masks to earn. As if that wasn't enough to worry about, this game also has a harder difficulty mode called Extra Mode. Unlocked after completing the main story for the first time, Kirby has way less HP and some areas are remixed to be more difficult. Both the main story and Extra Mode keep track of completion percentage. So, so far, that's two complete playthroughs for story. Let's not forget the arena, a boss rush where Kirby has limited recovery items and must survive an onslaught of all 15 bosses in the game that unlocks after finishing the main story. But wait, there's more! Finishing the story yet unlocks another mode as well, something they created just for this version of the game. The Magalore epilogue stars, you guessed it, Magalore, right after the events of the main game. This is a whole new way to play, with a completely different playstyle to master, and yes, more platinum medals to earn. Oh, I'm sorry, did I mention the medals? Real quick, uh, every challenge in the main story, EX mode, and every stage in the epilogue has bronze, silver, gold, or in this case, platinum medals to earn. And I'll be honest, um, this was way more work than I was expecting to do to produce a Kirby video in less than a handful of days. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is basically a razor blade hidden in a candy wrapper. Watch out, kids. Watch out. Even with this surprisingly difficult road sketched out, it's tough to stay mad at Kirby. The presentation of Return to Dreamland Deluxe is incredibly charming. It has to be, to mask the hidden brutality that awaits for us completionists. For a character who rarely says anything beyond hi, Kirby is still as charming as can be. This remake has an amazing art style, almost comic book-like, with every character thickly outlined. Everyone pops. Well. Everyone except for the new King DDD model who looks like an extra from the 90s Donkey Kong Country computer animated show. But that's kind of his style nowadays, so it's funny. Enemy variety is overall pretty great, and it's always a delight seeing series stalwarts like Waddle Doo march along. I got unreasonably hyped when I saw Knuckle Joe, who I didn't realize I had strong feelings about until I completed this game. Knuckle Joe is sick, by the way. Dreamland itself looks about as good as it possibly can. Every level has a distinct personality, though individual stages didn't particularly stand out to me. Every level with elemental effects like water or fire looked especially awesome. 
The most memorable parts of any given mainline Kirby game are the copy abilities. I'm happy to say that Return of Dream Land Deluxe keeps this tradition alive. All your classic copy abilities are here. Sword, Beam, Spark, Parasol, etc. But there are a few new ones in this version too. My favorite being the Mecha Suit. Yeah, Kirby had mech powers in Planet Robobot, but I like this little scaled down version tremendously. Every copy ability gives Kirby an outfit, and every single one is cute as hell. It almost takes away from the weight of the completion process. Copy abilities feel more fleshed out than ever in this game, with different attacks depending on movement and directional inputs. You can get by with only mashing buttons, but it is incredibly satisfying to use the full range of abilities before you. In fact, all playable characters have a bevy of attacks at their disposal. Bandana Waddle Dee can hurl spears from a distance, King DDD can smash through breakable blocks with his big hammer, and Meta Knight is as fast and fierce as ever. Each character feels very distinct, and you'll certainly have your favorites when playing in a group. Return to Dreamland folds in new mechanics to the overall Kirby formula. Kirby can now do a super inhale where he uses his greatest gift, sucking in not just one enemy or one block, but as many as he's possibly able to do within reach. Now this feels extremely good to see massive stone blocks disappear into Kirby's Maw, only to be spat back out as a massive destructive star. This ability becomes crucial to master for some late game areas. Kirby can also gain super abilities from special sparkly enemies. Now these moves are always hilarious. They take normal copy abilities and supercharge them into screen clearing attacks that can decimate portions of the environment. And each super ability looks spectacular. They ride the line between badass and being really funny. So the super hot fire ability allows Kirby to summon flaming dragons that streak across the entire screen. Super Blade Knight lets Kirby wreck house with a sword 20 times his size. And all of the swords are different every time you use them. You don't find these super abilities too often, maybe every other stage, but they're always a blast and they look awesome every single time. A classic staple to the franchise, Kirby music is always incredible, and the soundtrack here is very solid. Although I don't think there's anything as memorable as the main theme from Kirby in the Forgotten Land, I still found myself humming along or bobbing my head as I played through every stage though. As beautiful and varied as the main story mode is, I was shocked at how charmed I was by Mary Magaland. How Laboratory made their very own Disney Disneyland Main Street with this mode. From the music, to the fountains, to the Waddle Dees, this mini theme park will win you over instantly. This area becomes more and more populated as you complete the main story, with boss characters eventually arriving in the main square to hang out. I also think it's silly that this game makes a point to tell the player that Mary Magaland takes place in a different canon than the main game. Whew. I was starting to get confused about all of the lore happening in a Kirby game. It is against the law to play a Kirby game and not come away smiling at least a little bit. Dreamland is whimsical and wonderful, and I'm impressed at the effort that was made to make this game look and sound as gorgeous as it does. I know everyone right now is all hyped up on Metroid Prime Remastered, but Kirby's been having a quiet renaissance lately, and I, for one, am here for it. Kirby can be enjoyed by anyone, regardless of skill level. One of the great triumphs in the series is that even if you're not very familiar with video games in any form, you'll still find your average Kirby game very approachable. Return of Dreamland Deluxe leans into approachability for the less seasoned player with the addition of Helper Magalore, Kirby's version of Funky Mode. But the game also steps up things to be one of the most surprising completion challenges I've had this year so far. The main adventure in Return to Dreamland Deluxe goes down pretty smoothly. As far as straightforward Kirby adventures go, this is one of them. But this game, like Magalore himself, is tricky. Almost right away, this game starts putting up hurdles for completionists to overcome. And I'll be honest, for not knowing anything about this game, I almost stumbled. Who would have thought that Kirby would be the one to break me in more recent weeks? Almost everything in this game counts towards a total completion percentage on your save file. Completing stages is simple. Boss fights? Come at me. Finding every energy sphere? Honestly, child's play. But what completely knocked me to the floor were the nine copy challenges. You may ask yourself, what does finding energy spheres in the stage actually do? I'll tell you kids, they unlock stuff back at the lore star cutter. Notably, challenges. Every 10 to 25 spheres you find opens up a new challenge to complete. These are tailored to specific copy abilities and kind of remind me of the break the target stages from Super Smash Bros. Melee. The goal in a given challenge stage is to make it to the very end under the time 
time limit after racking up as many points as possible. Points are earned by collecting coins and defeating enemies. Coins are also lost upon taking damage. At the end of the challenge, you're given a medal based on your points earned. Bronze is simple, but platinum? A nightmare in Dreamland. I am not exaggerating when I say I was stuck trying to platinum one of these challenges for about five hours straight. Just one. I had to stop because my thumbs were swollen and I literally could not play anymore. I don't know if it's my age or if I'm just tired, but hot damn are these challenges rough. What the hell, Kirby? I thought you were supposed to be this chill dude. Don't toy with us mortals. Eventually, I found my groove. The secret? Getting some sleep. After bashing my head into these challenges for hours at a time, I took a break, fell asleep, and was able to approach them fresh, and I literally platinumed two to three in a row. Once I finished every level, found every energy sphere, and platinumed every single challenge, this mode, technically speaking, was 100% finished. And then, well, I had the rest of the game to complete. Rather than jumping straight into extra mode, I took a jaunt over to Mary Magaland to complete what I thought would be 100 missions. This mode, separate from the main game, is essentially a hub for mini games, which are called subgames here. But there is a lot more to unlock than I initially thought and knew. Kirby subgames are short and sweet, like Mario Party mini games. And consequently, Kirby Streamland Deluxe makes an excellent case for itself to be a party game if you want to do something different with a group of friends. But just because these subgames are short doesn't mean this game can't make things difficult for us completionists. Let's take the Samurai Kirby subgame, for instance. Very simple. Just press the button when a prompt flashes before your opponent does, and you win. Easy. But in Mary Magaland, every sub-game has missions attached to it. One mission for Samurai Kirby requires you to defeat five AI in a row on hard difficulty without losing. That means being perfect against a computer who is merciless. AI Meta Knight, you are my eternal nemesis. But the beatdown does not stop there. You can eventually unlock a global version of Samurai Kirby where you compete against 100 other players for the best time online. There is literally a mission that requires you to place in the top 20 of this mode. The truth of it, you basically have to get lucky. But you know what? I got incredibly lucky after 45 minutes went full Bushido Blade here and won first place on this mission with a whopping zero. My time was zero. Get out of my house. But see, then I almost had a heart attack when after I completed all of the 100 missions, I thought I was done. Instead, I unlocked 20 more missions known as the True Extra Missions. True Extra subgame Mission Hell includes eating 28 out of 30 eggs in Egg Catcher, meaning you can only miss a few, hitting eight bullseyes in Ninja Dojo Master on Master Difficulty. And unfortunately, going back to Samurai Kirby, you unlock two extra True Missions that are very exhausting. One is to beat Samurai Kirby mode two times in a row, meaning you never lose a single fight against AI 10 times. I got incredibly lucky because I forgot that I did the first five, took a huge break, revisited Samurai Kirby, and on my first try, got lucky enough to just beat it. The second one, and the most difficult of them all, is to get in the top 10 for Samurai Kirby 100. But luckily for me, all of the missions that you do in True Extra Missions are automatically unlocked if you did them while you were playing the sub games. Majority of these aren't insurmountable as they seem, but they are definitely a shock to the system and made me sweat. Especially when you go into Mary Magaland thinking it's going to be a very low stakes experience. It is not, everyone here is a liar. Granted, most of these missions can be unlocked in a co-op experience with friends and family, they still get very hard. Finishing missions unlock statues that appear throughout the park. This is fun and nostalgic, and if you're a fan of Kirby characters from all across the series, it's nice to see them represented here. Each subgame has its own associated set of missions, and completing these unlock a secret alternate song that you can play for that subgame. Playing subgames also earns you stamps, which go on a stamp card for something called the Stamp Rally. Finishing stamp rallies unlocks dress-up masks, which allow the player to wear different outfits in Magaland, or in the main game even. It's cute and unsettling to dress up as different characters. Stamps also give you souvenirs that you can take back to the main game. Souvenirs is kind of a weird term because it's not really a souvenir, it's an item you can use in game. Souvenirs are in-game items like the tomato, or energy drinks, or even copy abilities, or crackler cannons that you can access at the drop of a hat if you need a boost, which you might just need when completing extra mode. So extra mode would normally be no big deal for a Kirby game. Yes, I've got a little less health, and some of the boss fights are a little more difficult. The final boss has a new name and some different attack patterns, but overall, not too tough. 
That is until you remember that those nine challenges from before are back once more. They're still here, taunting me. And now the requirements for a platinum medal are even worse. Kirby, please. Please, I have a family. I've got two little dogs and a partner. Don't do this to me. Overcoming these challenges again on extra mode is a hell of a thing, especially because the game doesn't spell out what the requirements are for a platinum medal. For extra mode, I essentially had to take my platinum scores in the normal mode, guesstimate how many more points I would need, and then just bash my head against that wall over and over and over again. It was rough to put it lightly. Fortunately, Return to Dreamland Deluxe has a built-in way to blow off steam that's actually kind of relaxing compared to completing these challenges. The Magalore Epilogue, the Interdimensional Traveler. This takes place after the final boss fight of the main story. Magalore has been blasted into a different dimension and stripped of all of his powers. You've got to earn those powers back and play through several different stages to do so. I had no idea what to expect from this epilogue, but I definitely didn't think I'd be completing a mini 2D action RPG with the skill tree in entirely different play styles from Kirby. Magalore has all the same moves as he does in his boss fight with Kirby, just on a way, way smaller scale. It's extremely adorable. This feels like a prototype of a Magalore-centric game in the future. Magalore may lack Kirby's ability to copy enemies, but he has plenty of tricks up his sleeves, especially when you level up his magical skills. Unlike main story levels, Magalore levels do not have collectibles to find. You do, however, earn medals after completing a level, with, yes, platinum being the highest. But earning a platinum in these stages is nothing compared to those challenges. Platinuming a Magalore level requires a high combo score and finding as many colorful little droplets called magic points as possible. Doesn't mean you won't have to replay a few levels here and there, but after having my fingers destroyed from these challenges, I'll gladly play through these with a big smile on my face. Magalore can spend magic points to increase his powers. All you've got to do is open up the Magalore's magical skills menu and get to work maxing out his abilities. There are 12 abilities total and maxing out every one takes thousands and thousands of points. You'll have to replay levels several times to earn enough currency to max out everything. Clearing every Magalore stage with a gold medal or higher unlocks yet another bonus, an extra stage. Now this stage is tough, featuring a gauntlet of tricky platforming that requires you to have mastered most of Magalore's moves. But honestly, this stage was a genuine pleasure to earn. Maybe it was just the novelty of playing as a completely different character, but the Magalore stuff took me by surprise in such a great way. Finishing the Interdimensional Traveler then adds six more battles to the arena, turning it into the true arena, which admittedly wasn't that hard in comparison to everything else living up to this. But if you had told me a month ago that completing a remake from a 12-year-old Kirby game would almost psychologically scar me, I would have laughed at you. But I stand before you humble. Return to Dreamland Deluxe is adorable and fun. Like its mascot character, it's filled with dark secrets for completionists. And let me tell you, anyone out there who reviewed this game who gave it a low score because it's easy, start completing your games, my dudes, because it's hard. Though the tasks presented in Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe are overwhelming, I love that completion criteria is so cleanly tracked. This has been a staple of the Kirby franchise. Kirby almost always respects completionists, and I love that. Even as I raged the sheer amount of stuff I had to do and the insane challenges I had to overcome, I always knew what was next. Whether or not that provides enough motivation to fully complete the game is entirely up to the player's own perspective. But for me, I wanted something just a little bit more for all of my efforts at the end of the day. So, what classifies as completion? I've had lots of people on Twitter making fun of me for being slow for not completing the game fast enough and getting a video out on time. But I would often follow up and compare my own completion criteria to them, and most times people would go, uh, no, I didn't do that. So, let's start. Completing story mode to 100% provides a rainbow star next to that mode. The same goes for extra mode. The Magalore Interdimensional Traveler Epilogue gets a little rainbow tree next to its name after fully completing it. After fully doing everything in Merry Magaland, I unlocked almost all of the 90 dress-up masks and all 10 statues in the plaza. When you complete all 120 missions, you get a little cute thank you message from Manager Magalore, and you're treated to a fireworks show. Completing all of the other modes fills up the jukebox 
with all 204 music tracks. Now this is a great throwback reward as most Kirby games do have some kind of sound test. I love to stop and have a listen to songs from Kirby's past, especially when this jukebox is full of amazing remixes. I will say however, most people who aim to do this will realize that you're going to be missing a couple of tracks. That's because in the game, there are secret rooms known as HAL rooms. These rooms often play secret tracks that will unlock once you've discovered the rooms. There's even one included in the Magalore Interdimensional Traveler epilogue mode. Once you get all 204 tracks, the music jukebox gets a golden star, and a special music track now plays in the main menu. Now this is actually pretty cool, but I would like to add, getting all the music tracks is not required for 100% for your profile. Officially, when you complete all of the main modes, you will unlock the final mask, which is the gold Kirby mask. And in doing so, you will earn a 100% rainbow shine thing on your game save file. The icon will turn to a Kirby wearing a crown, winking at the camera, meaning you did it, you are done. Now this gold Kirby mask is awesome because it's sound that goes with it is the original sound that Kirby would make in the original Game Boy game, Kirby's Dream Land, that started it all. You also get treated to a special secret cutscene in which Kirby and friends are dancing to the Kirby victory theme, and thus it will earn you a gold star in theater mode. And with that, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is completed. So the true thing about why this game gets a finish it rating is for one thing and one thing only. The 18 platinum challenges were incredibly hard as hell and you don't even get an acknowledgement that you did it. The bare minimum that the player has to do is just beat the challenges and get at least a bronze rating on all 18 of them. Man, look, I appreciate an attaboy as much as the next guy, but I would have loved something way more substantial in this case. I'll take a mask, a skin, hell, let's just make Kirby platinum at that point. Yet in the end, I spent about 35 hours total on the entire game and about 15 bucks on bandages for my thumbs. That 100% completion file does look really tight, but I definitely bit more off than I expected to chew on with this one. When Kirby in general, and in this case, Return to Dreamland Deluxe is easy, it's really easy. But when it's hard, it's really, really hard. Satoru Iwata said that in any Kirby game, there must be an element of freedom that lets people play in a variety of ways at their own skill level. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe Edition has something to offer everyone. I genuinely think there is something fun to experience in every single mode, especially if you can play this game with friends. However, earning platinum medals on every challenge and grinding to master all the missions in Mary Magoland may not have the epic reward that you're hoping for. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Finish It. Thanks for watching, and check out some of my other Kirby videos on this channel, like Kirby in the Forgotten Land, or even the original Kirby's Dreamland. I've been Gerard, and I'm going to my own Dreamland because, well, I'm gonna go sleep. I'm gonna do it, you guys.